because reading data from a CSV file into a list of lists is something that we might want to do more than once, then it is convenient to turn that into a function. Here I've defined a function called read CSV to list of lists. And the thing that I pass into the function is the path of where the file is located. Then here's my open statement and where I create the reader object. The last part of the function then is to create an empty list of lists. And then as we step through each of the lines in the reader object, it, each one of those will be a list. We append that list onto our list of lists one at a time as we iterate through each row. And when we're done with this indented code block, then the file is closed. So we jump back out to this indentation level. And then it returns the list of lists that we created as a return value for the function. So depending on your kind of installation, you can select one or the other of these ways to define where the file is going to be found. Um, I'm running this on a Mac. So I'm just going to let the file be in the same directory that I'm running the Jupyter Notebook from. That's why my path is nothing. So I will um, read in the file student.csv that I read before and then have it print what is in that list of lists that gets generated as the output of this function. And then I'll have it tell me row one, which is actually the second row, and then item number two, which is the third column. I'll run this first part of the script, <clears throat> and I can see here's my list of lists that I've read in from the CSV file. And when I ask for the item number one, which would be this list here, second item or item number two, which is zero, one, two, it should be this one here, and that is the value that is returned. I'm now going to run the rest of the code, which I put into a separate cell. This does a tricky little thing of building up a string that contains a bunch of parts from this list of lists. So I start with an empty string. And then as I go through each of the four rows in the student information, I have it step through each column and add the contents of that cell for that row in that column to the string that I'm building. And after each one of those items, I'm going to add a tab character so that it will space over a fixed amount. I will do that through each of the columns in a particular row. And then once I've finished with that row, I will add a new line character to the end of that row. And then I'll repeat that whole process for each of the rows in the table. And when I'm finished, I'll take this whole string that I built up and print it on the screen. It's not that great of an output, partly because the tab stops don't line up. This is an attempt to sort of print this out as a table. Um, so it's not as good as opening it in a spreadsheet program, but at least you can see sort of the structure of what I was able to read in from the file and that it's similar to what we saw when we looked at it in the spreadsheet program.